Hey makers this is Truveen and in this episode I'm going to talk about for all function in detail we will talk about when we can use for all function and why to use for all function in depth we will talk about the different use cases in depth so let's get started but before that if you haven't followed me on my instagram twitter and whatsapp channel so far do follow me so first of all let me talk about in general for function in it programming Let's say for an example you have an array and let's say you want to iterate through your array and wanted to perform some sort of operation on top of that at the time without power apps in any programming language basically we had a for function in other programming language how for function was working is for in the bracket you are initializing the variable then you are adding the condition and they are in, then you are incrementing the variable one by one and then you iterate through one by one row at that time now here for all function works in a similar fashion so let's talk about that in depth so first of all let me show you one of the collection that i have initialized on my page so here i have taken one collection called collection employees in collection employees i have the different parameters like first name last name and department these three are columns over here so this is my first collection and second collection i have is collection head of department and here i have the different value of first name last name and department over here now let me click on the button to initialize the value of the collection so let's check how those values are looking like so whenever i am double clicking on my collection you can see that i have this kind of row column structure available over here department first name and last name now let's say for an example what i want to do as a next step is i want to iterate through each individual row over here and i want to concatenate first name and last name then i can use for all function over here in the power apps now let me talk about how for all function will work what's the syntax of it and what are the different thing you need to consider in your mind here what we will do is simply we will iterate through the for all loop on this collection employee and concatenate first name and last name over here so let's get started so first of all here what i am doing here is i am just writing on select event of that and i will use for all function over here in for all the first parameter is data source so here data source is my collection so i am just passing my collection employees then you need to provide a formula what you want to do so whenever you use for all function in the second parameter if you want the current row value then for that this record is the term which is being used okay so what i'm doing here right now i'm just using this record dot first name and i want to append the last name as well so i'm just adding one space in between with the end person and then this record dot last name that's it and finish the bracket okay so i'm just doing this operation for all and we just iterate through this stuff now i want to store this overall stuff in one of the collection so on top of that i will just use one more collection here so before for all let's use clear collect in the bracket call final full name and just use this entire for all over here and at the end finish the bracket and let's see what we are getting here as an end outcome so this is my final formula now let's click on the button and let's see what we are getting over here i'm double clicking on it and you can see that the final concatenated value is looking like this Truvin Shah, Alia Kapoor, Sid Malhotra, right? So it concatenated it perfectly. And here how you can iterate through each collection item and perform whatever thing you wanted to do. Now let me talk about one more interesting use case. Let's say for an example you want to create a collection of all next fifteen days in one table. Then how you can iterate through that? Let's say for an example, today is seventeenth October, 
and I need the date value for next 15 days in form of table. How can you get that? For that as well, the for all loop will useful over there. For that, we will use one sequence function inside our for all loop. So let's have a look. So here I have taken one more button for for all sequence. And now let's use function for all inside the for all first as a source let's provide the sequence i need next 15 days right so i will just use sequence function of sequence 15 so 1 to 15 it will iterate through now when it iterate through i need the date over here okay so what i will use here is date add function over here date in date add what i will do is i will pass current date time over here then number of units is equal to this record dot value because sequence function will return the value and first of all in current date it will add one day two day three day right and the last parameter is unit is days okay so i add created this function perfectly for all is created and now let's store for all's result in one of the collection clear collect and just provide call next 15 days and complete the bracket and let's see the value so you can see that here this is working as a incremental parameter okay let's click on the button and let's see what we are getting here so i'm just clicking on that and you can see that this is my collection from 18th october to 1st of november i get this perfect value over here right isn't it cool so this is the second use case with the sequence function with for all okay now let me talk about the third use case over here Let's say for an example, you want to bulk insert your data into your SharePoint list. Then at that time as well with patch function, you can use for all function because patch function supports one by one row operation at a time, right? So if you have a collection and if you want to bulk insert those data in your database at that time, this is useful. So first of all, let me show you my SharePoint site. So this is the SharePoint list I do have. And now here I want to insert first name and last name in bulk. Okay. So what I'm simply doing here is here I had my collection, collection employees, right? Here I have almost one, two, three, four, five, six, around six to seven records. And I want to insert all those first name and last name in a bulk inside this SharePoint list. So what I will do is I will iterate through my collection and then I will use patch function to insert the data in the database. So simply let's write this thing. So here I have taken one more button for all. Okay. And now what we will use here is simply we will you apply for all loop on my collection, collection employees, then comma. And now here in the formula, we will apply our patch function. Okay. So I will use a patch function over here. All right. And let me finish the bracket. So we will not get the syntax error in patch function. I need to provide the name of my data source. So my data source list name is employee list. So I'm just providing employee list over here. Then comma, I want to insert a new record. So I will use simply defaults function inside that the name of the data source, which is my employee list. And then comma inside that I need to provide the record value okay so let's format the text so it will look nicer and now first i want to store my first name and last name so first name column name is title so i will just add title and over here if i need current row the easiest formula is i can use this record dot first name because this is the collection and this record is something which will give you the current row okay and then comma i want to pass this last name so let's provide last name as this record dot last name okay perfect and all good format the text and it will work absolutely fine all right now let's taste this function 
So I'm just clicking on this button and let's see what happens. So it started executing and let's check the list data. I'm just refreshing my list and here we are. You can see that all the records has been inserted successfully over here. All right. Now let me talk about one more interesting thing with the for all function. In for all function, when you are passing the first parameter as your data source, you can use as keyword over here. So when you use as keyword, it will provide you some sort of alias name over here. So over here, you can see that we have used this record dot first name. So as keyword is nothing but a, a any friendly name for your data source. So here collection employee, I will provide the abbreviation as CE. Okay. And then I can simply use instead of this record, I can use CE dot first name and CE dot last name. Okay. So it is absolutely same. So even you can use this record or you can use your abbreviation or friendly name that you have used with your as keyword. It will work as expected. Okay. So we have learned about the as function as well with the for all loop. Okay. Now let me talk about one more interesting use case over here. Let's say for an example, at the beginning, I have shown you collection employee over here and collection HOD. Now what I want to do here is I want to loop through my HOD and I want to find all the employees underneath that specific department. So let's say Rekha Shah is HOD of IT. So she need all the employees who are working for IT. So you can see here, here Dhruvin, then uh, Parth, Anjan is working for IT. So she need all three names along with one collection which is appended over here. So how can we create such kind of collection with the lookup? So let's have a look. So what I simply want to do is I want to loop through collection HOD and then I, I want to find out all the names over there. Simply I have taken this button and now let's write one for all function. So let's use for all and inside that we will use call collection HOD and we will use as keyword as well like HO. Okay. And then what we will do is simply we will uh, write a formula over here. We will type department and in department we will use HO dot department. Okay. So that value we are getting and then comma we need the employees EMP and in EMP we will simply use lookup function or maybe we can use simply filter function because we need all the employees for that specific department. So filter call employees and we will check department is equal to department is equal to this record dot department or HO dot department. So we will use HO dot department. All right. So it will give us all the names over here and the final look will looking like this. All right. And let's store this overall stuff clear collect and provide the name of the collection call department with employee and complete the bracket format the text. And this is how the code looks like. Now let's click on the button and see what we are getting. So here I'm just going and checking the collection. So let's look at the table. So you can see that these are the different department. When I click on IT, I can see three names underneath that, right? Same way. If I go to ops, I can see one employee over here. All right. So this is how it is. We use for all inside that we use the filter function as well over here. Also, let me talk about one more interesting thing here. The important of as keyword is the most because let's say for an example, if you do not use this as keyword and let's say for an example, here you are simply using this record dot department. Okay. This record dot department. It is fine. But 
when you are doing the comparison that this collection has a column named department and you are comparing against this record dot department okay now here you can see that the department column name is same so actually uh, this particular filter function will get a confusion over here that which department value does it need to pick up okay so now I, if i'm clicking on this button in this fashion and if i check the record one more time over here you can see that when i click on it it is giving me all the records it is not giving me only it records because the filter function get confused over there and that's how to avoid that confusion this as keyword is boon for us so now if you use in this fashion as keyword with ho and instead of this record if you use ho it will perfectly work now i'm clicking on that again and if we check the value again you can see that now it shows only it related records over here so that's it so if i summarize everything what we did we simply learn the for all syntax we use for all with sequence function we used for all with patch function we use for all as inside for all we use as keyword along with that we use the filter function as well over there right so that's it for today hope this video helps you and values your time if so please hit thumbs up and subscribe my channel it's free for you but it motivates me a lot if you are looking for any training or consultation the website link is available on the channel cover home page and don't forget to follow me on my instagram twitter and don't forget to subscribe my another channel digital dhruvin where i'm uploading hindi content along with short content on power platform with this this is dhruvin signing off see you in the next session with some amazing content till then have a great day goodbye